Thank you for joining us on election night. I'm Pam Moore. And I'm Ken Wayne. The latest numbers right now for Chase Boudin. And here they are with about, last we saw 45%. It's still 45% of the vote counted. And you can see it's a pretty strong yes vote by the city of San Francisco and the voters on whether or not he should be recalled as the district attorney. Let's check in now with Crown Force Dan Thorne. He's been following Measure H to recall the district attorney, Chase Boudin. He joins us now with more. Dan. Yeah, Ken and Pam, we were uh, able to catch up with some of the uh, recall supporters here at the Blue Light on Union Street in San Francisco, and they're feeling pretty confident about the numbers that have been coming in so far. Uh, these people have been pushing this. Uh, they've had support, uh, millions of dollars of support to recall Chase Boudin as the district attorney. They've been concerned about the direction the city has been going in in terms of uh, criminal justice reform or maybe even lack thereof as far as they are concerned. The district attorney, though, has been fighting back. He's saying that it's uh, Republicans that have been trying to badmouth his approach to um, uh, criminal justice here in the city of San Francisco. He said that the old way that the city had been doing things, such as mass incarceration, was not working. We needed to start focusing more on the root causes of the problems that are happening here in San Francisco. Boudin was out there this morning. He was um, campaigning with people and he was asking them to help them uh, help him defeat this recall tonight. This is what Boudin said this morning, and here's what a small business owner feels about the performance that Boudin has done uh, so far. The recall is a massive gamble with public safety. We have no idea who or what would replace me. We don't know what policies they'll pursue. We don't know what track record they have. It will destabilize our district attorney's office at a time when our city desperately needs the steady hand of leadership. And that's exactly what I'm prepared to continue to do, fighting for San Francisco, fighting for safety. I don't think he's doing his job. Uh, he's not here to design policy he's here to prosecute criminals and he's not letting he's not doing that uh, we're letting people get away with lawlessness there are no ramifications for breaking the law and that's a really big problem so we've also uh, been reporting here on Crown 4 that uh, a lot of polling was showing that uh, it was going to be an uphill battle for Chase Boudin to remain here as the district attorney, uh, despite the optimism that's being uh, felt by people that are pushing this uh, recall movement. Um, they are hoping that, uh, that this is just the beginning. They're viewing this as uh, more changes that are going to have to come down. Um, there are some concerns about whether or not, uh, you know, the, who would take over as the district attorney. Um, uh, Richie Greenberg, who is one of the uh, founders of the recall movement here in San Francisco said that he is uh, uh, feeling pretty good about who the um, mayor would end up choosing as the interim DA, considering uh, who was put in uh, the supervisor seat once uh, Matt Haney left and became uh, the assembly member. Uh, so we'll see how things work out. Uh, if this recall does end up getting finalized and then the San Francisco Board of Supervisors declares that the uh, results are official, the mayor will then have to put a new district attorney in place, uh, an interim district attorney, and that will take at least 10 days for that to happen and then in November we will be looking at potentially an entire new slate of people that would be running for district attorney here in San Francisco so we're going to continue uh, following this story throughout the night and, and getting feedback from people uh, that are out here. Ken and Pam. Yes Dan it's conceivable that uh, that uh, Chase Boudin could run again in November. Right. Oh. Yeah, that would be interesting to see how that how that would work out, right? Um, I know that there has been some uh, interesting things that have factored into uh, tonight when it comes to this race, right? Uh, Proposition C has become another important one, which would, uh, in some cases, people are saying that it would limit the amount of uh, times that somebody can go through recall processes. Um, uh, right now, currently, you could serve in office for, for six months, and then you would be able to be... You would be able to work for six months and then be able to be recalled. Uh, they're trying to move that into 12 months. That would be a year on the job. Uh, and then that person that ends up taking over as the district attorney, right, the interim DA that the mayor um, puts in place, they wouldn't be able to run on the uh, general election in November. So that's sort of a curious situation as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that go into to how this all works out. Um, but for the people that were pushing for this recall movement, uh, they're probably feeling pretty good right now. All right, Dan. Well, certainly uh, a lot of uh, wrinkles to this story. But the bottom line is uh, Chase Boudin, the recall uh, has been decided. And it looks like he will be 
uh, taken out of his office uh, within the next couple of weeks or so after the uh, vote is certified by the Board of Supervisors. Yeah, that's with 45 percent of the vote in right now and Associated Press, these are numbers coming from AP saying that he is, this recall is going through with 61 percent voting in favor of it.